This is the Tiger Calculator from Japan. It's a tiger with its claw sort of in the air and giving a big roar. Japanese tiger. I don't know if it looks exactly like a tiger, but I sort of think it's a neat logo. And this is an Odner style calculator. Odner was an inventor in the 1870s when he decided to work on a calculator. Let's do a really quick calculation just to show you how these old mechanical calculators worked. They're fairly simple, but rather elegant when you get to know some of the tricks. All right, what I'm going to do is to dial in 111, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4. I'm going to turn this crank handle here. Let me just turn that so you you can see. I'm going to turn that crank handle. Here we go. Once, twice, three times, four times, four here, times 111, 444. Pretty good for a big old calculator that's 70 years old. All right, I'm going to keep all that and just do a slightly more complicated calculation. By moving this knob, I'm going to slide the carriage over one place. I'm going to multiply 111 by 14. I'm going to turn the crank one time. That's once. Now I've multiplied 111 times 14 and my answer is 1,554. These calculators could actually do quite powerful calculations by a series of moves and shifts of the carriage. Now let's talk about the internal mechanism. I'm going to pull the cover off. Then I'm going to pull this little guy off too. There we are. It's pretty neat, huh? Here, let's do uh, the calculation we were doing a little earlier. Well, we'll do 222. I'll just start turning it. So you can kind of see what's going on. 444, 666, 888. There we are. Hey, okay, how does this thing work? Well, uh, the first thing to notice are these gears here. I'm just going to turn one of them. There, we went from 8 to 9, uh, 8 to 9, 8 to 9, and now all the rest are 0. These spin freely, as you can see. So then as this drum turns, we're going to see teeth catching these gears. Here, I'm going to turn the drum. Now remember now, what we have here is 222 uh, set with these three settings dials. Now I'm going to turn the uh, pinwheel, and let's look at the bottom of this thing. Here, I don't know how well you can see it. Here's a tooth, here's a tooth, that's two. Here's a tooth, here's a tooth, here's a tooth, here's a tooth. That, two teeth on those first three settings dials. So if I turn these down one more, go to three on each of these. Now I'm going to turn the drum over and we're going to take a look. Now I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. These teeth catch these gears and advance these dials. Now you might be wondering how does the uh, counter register advance? Well, there's a tooth right here that catches one of these gears on these number dials. Every one of these has its own gear, but there's only one of these that advances. So as I turn the crank, if we watch this number six, that you can see seven, eight, nine, and then we'll go over ten. Now that brings up an interesting topic, the tens carry mechanism. I have this set up with all nines all the way across. I'm going to add one to that number just so we can see how a tens carry works. First we start the pinwheel moving and then you'll see the first nine advance to a zero. Now we're going to see all the tens carries going on. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There! Pretty amazing! The difference between a calculator like this and uh, a calculating aid like an abacus is that a calculator will automatically handle the tens carry. And in fact, the tens carry is the principal design problem that the designers of calculators like this faced back in the late 19th century. The critical issue was when a number travels from 9 to 0, the following digit needs to advance. Getting that to happen was a tricky issue, and the designers back in those days really had a tough time with it. This little piece here is going to pop up when I advance from 9 to 0. Ah, see it? When the pinwheel comes around, there's a special pin, it's right here, that slips left and right. Can you see that? It moves from right to left. This little piece that's sticking up will shove this piece over, and it will act as an extra tooth, advancing the gear in the following column. Now comes the exciting part. Here's the place to look right here. This little guy is going to pop up, and each one of these will pop up in succession until we finally get to the last digit, which is this one right here. Can you feel the crackle of excitement in the air? All right, let's do it. I'm going to advance this one. Good. And here we go. The first tooth is going to bite. 
That raises the tooth. Now we've got the special tooth up. We're going to catch the first tooth. It brings the tooth up on the next, 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 advance and 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 next, and advance, and last one, one. Woohoo! Now I just want to clear out the accumulator. We'll do a little pull back to zero, and we'll do the counter register back to zero, and finally we'll do the settings register. There we are, back to zero. That is the Tiger calculator. In Japan, the Tiger was the dominant manufacturer throughout the 20s and 30s, but these old calculators are quite hard to find, especially outside of the Japanese islands. Japanese Tiger calculator!